Welcome to the Vale, a rare bastion of civilization in a world recuperating after a terrible centuries-long war. Though the battles ended 200 years ago, the land still recovers from this period of tumultuous strife and slavery. Join now the defenders of the Vale, as they navigate a world riddled with opportunity and tragedy, all the while seeking glory, gold, and adventure. So let me create the scene for you. You're down inside of a, a pretty decent sized hole. There's five circular holes up top. There's a cave behind you, but Ren blew it up with a fireball uh, bomb with a, with a damn uh, Mol- Molotov cocktail. Um, you guys dug through and found the remains of several different people, mostly in various states. But the two freshest mara- remains were Darwin and Fenelius. You pulled the, all of the bodies out. Uh, especially Fenelius, you're pretty concerned about that. I think you duck, you, you were talking about duct taping his leg back on or something weird. But there you guys stand. Um, some of you covered in the visceral insides of this, not a hydra. Emotionally drained from discovering the dead body of two of your oldest companions. And and briefly stunned as you're trying to figure out what the next step is for the Defenders of the Veil. Ricky, does a corpse count as an object? Nope. Okay. You scared me with that question. <laughs> Would you like to see the thinking behind the question? Yeah, but what else are you guys doing besides breaking body? Oh, mending, yeah, no. What are you guys doing? Do we know what time of day it is? I can make up that answer for you real quick. It is... 3 p.m.-ish. Sounds like a good time to take a long nap. I was watching Airbender, and when they went to the... There's a... They, they found a tribe of people, and I forgot about this, but they had candles, and so instead of calling it 3 o'clock, they call it 3 candle. Ah, yeah, the old air temple. Such a great show. I love calling uh, it an anime because it makes people angry. Anyway, topic for later. What are you guys going to do? I'm gonna going take a- to go climb up the uh, the head. Actually, I guess I, I'll wait till we climb out first because like, we can use the head to climb out, so never mind. Are we? Do we do anything else down here? Rin is going to um, climb, uh, climb up the hole as well, uh, and uh, in, because he's in pain, he, he, want, he wants to go um, for a little walk and uh, maybe just um, get uh, get to his uh, emotional state uh, back to uh, normal. Where is Finn's body? It's currently laying on the ground, uh, very politely laid down. Next to Darwin, her shield's body. I will be carrying them out whenever I go out. Robbie John is going to cast Greater Restoration on Finn and his leg. Uh, you imbue a creature uh, you touch with a positive energy to undo a, debil- 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 a debilitating effect. Uh, you can reduce the target's exhaustion level by one, and one of the following effects. Charm, Petrified, Curse, and a reduction of one of the target ability scores victory. So... I don't know what greater restoration. It's not going to bring them back, and it doesn't say that it puts pieces back together. It like removes things, right? Okay. So if he was charmed, or maybe already, all she wants is a creative way to uh, like put back the pieces of uh, fins together. As as far as I'm concerned, that's what she meant. Am I right? Yes. It's just a role play thing. Let her spend that. Uh... Spell slot. <laughs> it's up to the DM. It's it's not up to the short the short. Uh, yeah, I get rogue. the point. <laughs> the short, short, very short rogue guy. Do you want to cast raise dead on him? No, I just want to put his leg back on. You don't. You don't want to cast raise dead. I kind of do. <laughs> you know how baffled Gravine would be. And how offended Roland would be. <laughs> you, have, you have to be casting something on him because I believe rest, not restoration. Uh, oh my God, what's the name of the goddamn spell? Where you bring people back to life? 
Ray's dead has a 10 day time limit. And according yeah, to Finelius's journal, you guys have, it looks like it's been six or seven days. What direction is the spell I was thinking? Mm. Yeah. So it's a spell you have in your spell book right now. Yes, it is. I have an option of something we can do with Finn's body, too. Oh, God. You just closed the spell as you were looking at it, huh? You made your decision. What are you going to do? I don't know. Robbie John is kind of torn because she just had a fight with Brolin, saying that the only person who could decide was his Finn's mom. And... Why don't we cast Speak with Dead and ask Finn himself? Why don't you read the second sentence in the spell raised, Dad? If the creature's soul is both willing and at liberty to rejoin the body, the creature returns to life with one hit point. So you can't raise dead against somebody's will. So if he wants to be dead, I just have to waste a spell slot, essentially? As you're about to take a rest in a little bit, sure. Or you can cast Speak with Dead, ask him first before you waste a high-level spell slot on it. We're going to be taking a nap. I'm not worried about the spell slot. Robbie John would like to cast Speak with Dead. All right, so, bam. Aberration, casting time, one action, range 10 feet, a corpse of your choice within range. Nothing happens. Is the mouth, does the mouth appear to be in good working order still? Yeah. It's pretty scarred. Like, it looks like it's had better days. But it's still it's still a mouth hole with tongue and most of his teeth. And it doesn't work? If, it, if it's been cast recently, it doesn't work also. I don't know. Is there a visual tell or do I have to ask a question? Go ahead and try asking a question. Okay. No, what's the question? Is there a visual tell? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that I mean, doesn't count. Don't do that to me again. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, face, <laughs> no face and ceiling questions? No, no ceiling face. No. Okay. What do I ask? Oh my god. Is that your question? What do I ask? Okay. No! <laughs> Robbie John does not speak of herself in first person. You know this. That was OOC. <laughs> Robbie John. Robbie John is going to ask, uh, Mr. Mr. Friend, can you hear me? So you ask your question and everybody gets real quiet as they're standing around watching. Uh, and for a brief moment, you think you see the corpse move, but no, nothing happens. <laughs> Your face transition. Great. Makes everything worth it. Well, Robbie John really needs to take a nap now. You gonna ra- You got a fifth level spell or are you out? I do, but if he's not willing to even talk to me, what, means, what makes everybody think he's going to come back? It's okay. You can, you can, I mean, do what you want, but you're going to take a rest soon anyway, right? Yeah, Robbie John is going to be uh, thoroughly irritated and cast Ray's dead. <laughs> thoroughly irritated? <laughs> yeah. How dare he not speak to me? Okay, so there's some stuff that I can't answer. Uh, when you look at the spell Ray's dead. Again, that second sentence is if the creature is willing. So uh, I, I have to ask somebody else because I can't do that. Fenilius, would you be willing to be raised? Absolutely, 100%. And then nothing happens. So his soul is not at liberty. Robbie John really kind of needs a nap. I think you need an emotional nap. Yeah, Robbie John kind of needs an emotional vacation. (laughs) Yeah, you're you're relatively close to the town whose name I forgot already. And you hold her. No, not you hold her. Die Boldar. Die Boldar, that's it. (laughs) But what do you guys want to do from here? I think we had to go back and talk to Geyser Geyser, too. Do we? That's what he wants. He was interested in this creature. He also was interested in it alive, uh, which we were not able to manage. Nope. Too bad. Yeah, it'll but be he, fine. He might still be interested in seeing it dead. Didn't somebody disintegrate it? I feel like it was disintegrated. That does sound familiar now that you've said that. But that was after he said game, set, match, so it didn't happen. Oh, that's after we ended the session? Yeah, but if you want that to be whoever said they were going to disintegrate it, if they want that to still be a thing, it can certainly be. I think that was David. That was me. And yeah, I definitely wanted to disintegrate it. At the end of the last session, I went to do it, and somebody went to stop me, and it would involve more role-playing, so Ricky called it there. That's actually how it worked out. 
So, are you disintegrating the body? I am going to disintegrate the body. I think this thing is far too evil and dangerous to fall into somebody's hands that would be able to bring it back. Look at what this has done to a single town. Sue is not going to make any attempt to stop him. Before he does, I want to make sure that we're all up out of the pits using the neck that I still have propped up and get my immovable rod out of his mouth so that don't go along with this whole sure. disintegrate. It's, it's, I'm not going to be that mean. You it's finally got to state. use it. Yeah, you finally got to use it. I'm not going to take it away. Yeah. Well, I've got to use it before. It just never was successful. That's fair. Probably but, John isn't going to stop him. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and disintegrate it. Okay. Anybody got anything they're going to do about that? And as you disintegrate it, you see a spectral vision of Geyser Geyser, who's been peering down one of the holes, kind of sigh sadly, but go, well, I understand. Robbie John is going to poop a little bit. Yeah, he was very terrifying. That's an image that's gonna, never going to leave my mind. Robbie John in the corner, taking a poop after such an epic fight and like drastic emotional moment. Yeah, that makes it. So do we have to go see Mr. Geyser, Geyser, or...? We were not. And, it, and apparently he knows that uh, we were not able to keep it alive, so I think we could leave. Excellent. Well, if we are ready, we're going to have to be quick. I'll post the spell in chat before casting. Do we want to check on the townspeople before we leave? Because they're all of a sudden waking up and seeing things aren't as rosy as they used to be. Robbie John isn't sure that we can say anything that would reassure them. We could at least explain what happened. That, would, uh, that I think, would go a long way for their healing process. Someone mm-hmm. should definitely explain. Not it. Not, not it. it. Not it. What well, does not hit me? Basil didn't say anything, so... I wouldn't mind explaining to the people. Okay, so you guys managed to climb up out of the hole. Onyx recovers his movable rod. Grok burns the spell slots. Make sure you burn them, because I may be a jerk in a minute. And disintegrates the body. So what now, guys? We walk back along the path to the town. Okay, then... Ren will uh, follow. Onyx, give me a percentile dice roll. And you don't want to be low. Good job. Nothing happens on the way back to town. You manage to come back into town, and as you can expect... There are people walking around confused as they as, as they and you both survey the damage to the town, really. I know you guys kind of saw it before, but it really kind of hammers home how bad they've been thrashed. And people are looking around, and you hear people start to get confused, and, and these certain people are looking around, and they're hollering for different people, like, have you seen Phil? Phil? Where's Phil? And they're starting to get frantic because they look for all these loved ones who are now lost to them that they didn't even know. Uh, and they begin their mourning process as, as they realize kind of what's going on. Or as they start to realize that there is something going on. Oh no, not Phil. Phil is such a cool boy. He was. What are you guys going to do? Well, Robbie John is going to stand, like, move to stand behind Basil and, like, kind of gently push him forward. Have I can you. try to get everybody's attention if you want. That's a have terrifying people, statement. Have the people uh, sort of noticed us or are they too panicked to really they're yeah they're pretty lethargic um i mean sure i'm sure some people looked up and saw strangers coming into town but nobody's gonna care right now basil will look for some sort of high ground something to to stand upon uh that is elevated off the ground is there anything like that that i could use sure you find like a a shopping cart that had been, not a shopping cart, but a, a wooden cart that you can kind of hop on that's been knocked sideways. He will uh, sit atop it and look to Grok and say, I'll try a more familiar approach to getting their attention first. And he will, you know, cup his hands at his mouth and, and will yell out. I won't actually yell because it's quite late in England. <laughs> um, but he basically just yells, you know, the excuse me <laughs> so you kind of stand up put your hands on around you and hey excuse me yeah might i have your attention please upon seeing the pathetic attempt that he's making at getting people's attention i want to cast minor illusion and have the sound of trumpets going off behind him for about two seconds so everybody looks over at him 
So trumpets happen as you're meekly uh, shouting excuse me. And people are confused and they start to come towards you, almost shuffling in a daze. Greetings, people of Diboldar. I am afraid I am not a messenger with a positive, happy message, but I am a messenger that can hopefully bring aid to you in these dark times. Unfortunately, did you do? Did you do all of this? Have you seen Phil? Unfortunately, I, I have not. I have not seen your Phil. This is not of my or, or, or of our doing. This is the result of a, a terrible misfortune. The damage and the and the missing people and the all of this horrible reality is simply the byproduct of some cruel mistake. The evil that had caused this is no more. However, its aftermath is very real. You must all understand, the first thing that you can do is mourn. The second thing you can do is remain together. I can only apologize for what has happened here, and I can also apologize for not having the right answers or the right words. I wish I had more to give you, but for now, you are at least in reality and no longer under the wicked control of a monster beneath the ground. They look very confused and they go, Monster? What? It, it is no more, but it once was. What? Listen to me, you must prepare yourselves. Your town is quite clearly not what it once was. If you could move away, I would perhaps suggest that you, I mean, visibly your buildings will not hold to any more devastation and hopefully the gods will be kind to you but as I said I am not a messenger that brings good news you just told them GTFO yeah kinda your house is shit get out of here true but they they kind of confuse they shuffle and they start they you know they continue doing what they were doing before you know you hear that lady trying to find Phil I'm gonna be casting minor illusion again are you looking are you gonna show her Phil no I'm going to be casting minor illusion to create a small sound right outside of Basil's ear. It's going to be a whispering noise. The illusion is going to say, you should suggest that they come with us to Centervale. Basil tightens his jaw. Grok, I'm not certain about the logistics of that. Didn't we teleport out here? No, we, we walked, but it took days. Oh, okay. We can take a long rest and teleport back. Ron's got t- uh, transportation covered, but Is for uh, us, not the whole c- company, <laughs> the whole city. Oh, you mean for everybody? Ron's got teleportation covered for everybody. For the party. Teleportation circle won't work to get the entire t- town through. Um, duration one round. That's like six seconds in, a, in one thing. Then I have to do it. Tw- I can only do it twice. Do we even have the room in Centervale? We already have refugees in Centervale. We could direct them towards the village, so that they should so choose to leave, they'd have a destination in mind. Or we could send guildies over, but... Just tell them we'll send someone if, if they want to, to come, well, they, 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 they just have to choose, and Rin just, like, go a little bit further, and just, like, with his tiny feet bumps on thing, he just hits things, and, you know, he's being hangry. Basil uh, stands up again and calls out, We only have interest in helping you. There is our settlement, the Center Vale, a few days travel away from here. If you have nowhere else to go, know that we will do our best to accommodate you. They kind of, a lot of them nod and they go, You can see some people considering it, but they don't come to a definitive answer yet. They're going I through a bit of shock. That, I understand that you must take your time and 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 mourn your losses but you must also understand that time is a commodity we will allow you that space but please put your put your well-being first i am terribly sorry for this most awful of surprises now what are you guys gonna do basil will sit on his overturned cart and look at the rest of the party unsure Ground will go up to him and put his hand on his 
Basil's shoulder and look him in the eye, give him a, no- a yes nod, but won't say anything. Sue is waiting Don't for it. Sue is waiting for Roland to cast his spell, and then he's going to try to run face forward into a tree. <laughs> Robbie John is also waiting for the teleportation spell because she is thoroughly uncomfortable and cannot handle any more bullshit before she takes a nap and eats something. What's that? You want a you want a whole case of bullshit? Give me a percentile dice roll, Mal. No. Give me it. Don't roll high. Good job. Everything's fine. We should take Finn's body back now. Agreed. You guys have both the bodies. Dorvin will have to take back to Centervale, but we should take Finn to his mother. But we did come out of the bar cellar in that area down there where Finn's foot was after we had our our proper vision back, correct? No, you've never been to that cellar since. Okay. Before we leave, I want to go back down and look around without those rose-colored glasses on and see if I see anything else that was out of place. I'm not going to make you roll. That's It was pretty much what it was. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't like another Phineas body over there hidden or anything. No, yeah. There's nothing new to see down there. The destruction is pretty much the same with rose-colored gla- gla- glasses or no. Okay. I'm good. All right. So I'm looking for a good sturdy tree. And then I'll cast Transport via Plants. And uh, we should all head through. Sue runs face first into the tree. Robbie John Onyx follows. Goes. Yep, Onyx follows Robbie John. Gronk. Gronk's gonna be following. Basil will too. Roland will go last. Come on, Rin. Yeah, Rin will um, definitely follow slowly behind. <laughs> Seven seconds later. So... We run into this oak tree outside of Dyboldar and emerge from a large redwood within Roland's glade. Done. You, you guys are all now in Roland's glade. Sue probably ran into the wrong tree, uh, but he still makes it. I don't know if it were uh, who's carrying the thingy, but I figured that maybe like Basil and Sue are carrying what's his face, Darwin, and then someone could probably carry Finelius on their own because he's. Small and scrawny. Probably John Will. Like, yeah. yeah. Onyx had already said that he was carrying. Oh, then uh, Robbie yeah. John won't. Okay. He, he had good. both bodies on him and carrying him fireman style. I'll I'll hold on to Finn's leg then. I'll Thanks. carry so, the other guy, the think, MP3 uh, guy that uh, nobody cares about. What the heck? He's my friend. <laughs> we what can't remember his name. I'll be carrying that guy. <laughs> what do you guys? So you, okay, you know who's carrying what bodies? Where are you taking them? Where are you carrying them to? We should, uh, we should take uh, O'Malley's. Diving. Well, m- maybe we should take dive in there, but I think we should just take Finn straight to his mother. Robbie John agrees with that. So you're going to the inn. Uh, oh, are we doing O'Malley's first? O'Malley's is like a little bit out of town, right? A little bit. I think we should take, we should go to the inn first, because then we can inform Nina. Okay. Basil will run on ahead a little bit and make sure that if Nina has any idea of what she wants to do with the body, then we can be faster about it. Uh, Rin will shadow um, Basil for a while, staying silent, but just like following him around a bit, just like, you know. Okay, so everybody's going back to the end. They're just Rin and Basil are doing it faster. Yeah. All right, you all get to the end. Basil and Rin, Rin, go ahead and place your tokens at the door. Is there a tiny buff <laughs> man at the bar? There's Basil. Where's Rin? Are you guys managed to walk in the door, and when you come in, you hear a guy going, I'm going to jack so that dude one. up. Scrawny little SOB. <laughs> Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. I'm the lesser. I get special training. <laughs> Puny. What? I'm sure you guys recognize that token, but that's the body <laughs> yeah. <building too. laughs> Master Broshi, the turtle hermit. But that's not uh, who that is. Just for information, do we recognize who he's talking about? Is he talking about Basil? Uh, oh, you yeah, have that... no idea. Oh, Basil, shit, okay. Basil, give me yeah. a intelligence check. The DC's low, so you'll be fine. Rolled eight. <laughs> you have no idea who that is, Basil. <laughs> You head. needed a 10, buddy. Basil's probably not really listening to what he says, to be fair. And he sees, when he sees you walk in, he goes, Hey, look! 
It's that lesser one now. As a guy who looks surprisingly like Ron. <laughs> uh, this is not me ignoring what's going on. Uh, do I see Nina? You do. She's drinking at the bar with him. So, I, you know, obviously I'm aware of what's happening, but Basil would probably ignore him, especially if he didn't understand that he was talking about him earlier. So, uh, he... Are he you carrying have... a body with you, Basil? I have a leg that is wrapped up in cloth, so... Okay, but you're not carrying the physical body. No, I'm not carrying Finn's body. Yeah, he's gonna be like, hey, 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 listen, Basil, the lesser, yeah, I'm talking to you. And he kind of flexes, his pecs are dancing like he's Terry Crews. He goes, I heard you were talking a little bit of trash. That's not true. I've never are. heard you talk trash to anybody. Listen, I want your title, okay? That's it. I've come here to take it from you, and whatever belt you've collected for it, I'm going to take that belt, throw it on my wall at home, because I'm going to be the champion at everything. Ren turns up to Basil and says, Do you want me to put some hood in him? No. I... Stop talking to your toddler, buddy, and look at me. You are known as the lesser, and i got to take that title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not taking challenges at this moment. Nina. So you relinquish the title. I'm busy right now, but I will accept your challenge in soon. Give me a time. Soon. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay. Would you like a beer? <laughs> I'm Rip. quite alright right now, thank you. Oh, alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to drink. What in the morning? Or do you wanna do evening? Ah, you tell me. I'll be here. And he starts drinking again. Okay. Nina? <laughs> She's she's downing a shot with the weird guy. Is you, uh, mm-hmm, yeah. This is going to sound a little bit out of the blue, but what's your last memory of Darwin Hotshield? Yeah, it was weird. I attributed it to the amount of liquor I've been drinking recently, but it was almost like I forgot about that guy for a little while. And all of a sudden, I just started all these flood of memories. Uh, nice guy, could handle his alcohol pretty good. And then the rest of you can actually start dropping your tokens in the in the end now. Um, Nina. We found him, along with Finn. They are no longer alive. What do you mean, no longer alive? What happened? They were attacked and devoured by a a monster that had been stealing all of our collective memories of them. She kind of sits back and she goes, shit. I couldn't have said it better myself. She takes, she has like four shots lined up in front of her. And she takes, she just kind of pushes them all over to her her drinking buddy. She goes, this is a somber and, and sober moment. Indeed. We are about to take Fenelius' body back to his mother so she can decide what to do with it. It's been probably about six or seven days until he perished, so we shall allow her to decide what happens. I believe Rabbi John tried to contact his spirit, but it, she was unsuccessful. Uh, out, out of character, do, did we get a drawing of the creature, the beast we just like fought? Do we have that? I think we had to give it back to guys for guys. So. Yeah, it was still in the book. But we do have it. Good. So, you, so, don't, you don't have it. It's in the library that you have access to, but you don't have it. Yeah. All right, so are you guys going to take Super- Darwin's body somewhere? I, I don't really have any interest. I've met Miss Zilwin, and I, I, I don't really want to again. Yes, you, you can certainly come. Um, yeah, maybe pick up some things and food. I'm starving. Sue so will stop at the bar or the kitchen and, and get some food and some drinks and bring it up to Ren's room. Thanks, man. And he, he's just going to go upstairs and set up the table and... Uh, this tiny comfortable place for both of them to just like lay low. Are you are you reflecting on your friendship with him? Is that what's going on there, bud? What what does Ren? that mean? Like are you it Ren's mad. He's obviously he was obviously mad because of what happened with Fenelius. Walk me through it. What's Ren thinking? You wanna know what's Ren thinking? Um he's thinking revenge. Uh he's angry and right now he doesn't really feel like uh, joking around and being like all fluffy and shit like he's usually. And even making jokes doesn't feel like okay. So I think right now what he wants is just like 
a small beer of food and a bit of silence maybe and um, he's definitely going to reach out to its contacts in the criminal world to um, find out where did that creature came from and he definitely wants revenge once like uh, even though uh, Finn and Rin like didn't like on surface get that much along um, in like Rin always teased him and shit so uh, losing a close friend like this uh, really I don't know, say that in English but um, something in the line of like he took it hard I guess no, that's, that, that says it well that makes sense and Sue Sue uh, is feeling similar you, you guys may have noticed Sue has not made any jokes or goofed off at all so similar to Ren, that's why he wants to follow you around. Uh, he's not going to try to talk or anything. Uh, the two of us can just sit and stew and keep each other company. Ren is going to um, take a chessboard out of his um, things in the room. And he's just going to put the chessboard with the food and drinks and just like, you know, play a game with the soup. Okay. And then what how are you guys getting Darwin's body back? If if you want, Tina can have some of the other guildies take Darwin's body to O'Malley. Yeah. I, I had that. I had been carrying it. Okay. But if you're going to go with them to uh, if I said Tina, I meant Nina. If you have uh if you have been if you if you want, somebody will take it so that you can continue with the rest of the main group and go to the uh Selwyn household. Okay, then I'll be doing that. All right, so Telgar and 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 Rith and Gravine take the body to O'Malley, and then wish you the best. Gravine seems especially upset at the loss of his uh, magic buddy. It is nice to meet both of you. I wish we could have met on better circumstances. You'll take them, and they they kind of nod at you and you know, clasp your shoulder, trying not to hurt their hand on your shell, and then they they manage to take Darwin. <laughs> and then they head off to O'Malley's. Or do they? Does Gravine have a new undead body? Maybe. Turn. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> bitch. Look at Roland's just like, wait, what? <laughs> the necro noodle. Necro noodle uh, is necro. <laughs> uh, you guys go upstairs and you, you kind of, again, somberly go up to uh, the room with the portal. Who's Who's going to go through first? If you want, I go through first. I'm sure I would be a surprise. I'm sure you would be a surprise, but I'll go first. You can go in second, bro. Then I'll go in second. I have my harmonculus back. I'm excited. <laughs> you do. For now. I will follow the rest of the party. I'll be the last one in with uh, with with Vanilla's body. Okay, so you managed to go through and and roll in and and. Everybody, as you go through the the portal, you go into the Silwind, the kind of that guest library, that 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 guest library or that seating room that she has, where she does a lot of her notes and stuff. And you come in, and sitting down at the main desk is Miss Silwind, and she is currently lecturing angrily, Fenilius, uh, in the in, in some sort of arcane work, as he's sitting there being lectured by his mom. Oh, hey guys! What? What? Um, I'm excited. Do you have my stuff? My books? Do you have my books? Please, do Basil, you have my books? Uh, I have I, your body! Basil just, like, I have tosses his leg like, to the ground. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Can I keep yes, it? Yes, it is! <laughs> I want to keep that. That's interesting. This is very... Basil just threw a uh, damn tantrum. <laughs> Seriously, though, my books? Does someone have my... Please, tell me you have my books. I have everything that belongs to you. Yes! I'm so Everything. glad to see you guys. Did you see that thing? That was disgusting. It ate me. Yes, uh, we have your remains. Uh, we were coming to deliver them to Belethiel to see what she wanted to do with y you. But apparently, uh, she's already done something. At that point, you've reminded him that you've reminded Fenilius that that he's sitting with his mother, and he <clears throat> gets embarrassed again, so he shuts up. 
Yes. Uh, Fanilius, your friends have bought your dead body back uh, so that we can properly take care of it. Get it taken care of because you smell. While she's talking, Basil runs up a tackle hook's fit, like in his chair. Oh, Potentially oh, knocking them oh both my. to the ground. Oh boy. I'm going to retract in into my shell, the, the upper half, and start pulling out finally as this stuff why everybody is greedy. Robbie John has done nothing since she saw Finn. She is standing frozen, kind of with a confused look on her face. She doesn't know if she should be happy or sad or angry. And she's just frozen, just full of emotion, just not moving and kind of like paws clenched and stuff. Friend, it is good to see you alive. I'm just startled is all. Probably, and Finelius is uh, kind of embarrassed, but he's glad to see all of you too. So probably to a little bit of surprise, he gives Basil a little pat and hug back. And he says, yeah, probably no more surprised than I am. I, I was not aware that my uh, mother had created it by uh, a clone of me just in in case of a situation like this so imagine my surprise when i got done getting eaten and uh, fell asleep and woke back up here yeah the only one not surprised is me because i know how damn clumsy you are miss silly says to Fenelius. do you know how many resources we had to spend on that do you know how i, I, I would I don't have done that yet. quite a bit <sighs> listen stay alive we can't do this infinity times. Um, I, I will do my best, Mother. Um, let me take care of this body. And uh, Finelius grabs his books and all of his stuff first and kind of hugs them closely and then grabs the body and kind of starts dragging it. So Gosh. did you return uh, all of Finelius' belongings, Grok? I did after everybody has gone up to him and hugged him and said it's good to see you and all that. I hand him his stuff and it says you so must you see a dragon turtle born for the first time Finilius. so you must be the famous Finn we've been looking for I am assuming this room is called lost and found here is your bag of stuff and I hand over all the Finn stuff that I've been carrying wait what lost and found we've it's been looking for checking lost and founds we finally found one. You were lost, now you're found. Oh, well, thank you. He's he's not a complete who, idiot. Who, who are you? My name is Grok. Well, nice to meet you. I'm Fenilius. Belethiel Silwyn stands up, her purple royal regal robes flooring, flowing. That was a really hard sentence for me to say. Uh, and she comes over to you, Grok, and she, uh, as she comes up, she very, like, TV show Elven royalty very gracefully extends her hand and uh, says, "My name is Belethiel. This is my house you're in." Good evening, Belethiel. And I see you're part of this guild. I actually am not part of the guild. Are you trying to join? I don't see why not. Did you help them find my son's body? I did. Yes. Ooh, I have questions for you. Oh, sorry, mother. She she stopped. And she looks. She goes from Elven Royal Grace to like anime angry woman as she turns the side eye to Fenilius, and she goes, "Did you interrupt me? You need to answer that." Um, in the, uh, yes, mother. She points to a chalkboard, and she goes, "Go right. I will not interrupt mother a thousand times." In fairness, I believe he preemptively spoke. So this is perhaps not, it's probably not safe right for you to correct me. I'm going to be honest, sometimes I have a little bit of a temper. Right, Vanilius? Fair enough. <laughs> He's trapped in a spot with that one. She goes, I've never seen a... Is it a turtle? It's a turtle, right? Uh, Gronk is actually a turtle. I've never seen a turtle, and I've been around a long time. She's kind of poking at your shell. Interesting. Where do you come from? That is a put-the-player-on-the-spot moment, Ricky, because you never actually told me where he was from. But he was... uh enslaved by the dragons for a while and that would be the answer yeah. that if that's that's what you remember that's how you grew up you didn't tell me what the name of that area is that he was kept oh yeah you have no idea oh. okay then i was uh enslaved by dragons 
for quite a long time and managed to escape them. Oh, a lot of that going around. Those dragons are sons of bitches. Well, thank you for rescuing my son's dead body, and I appreciate you joining them and bringing it back to me. I know it may have been made a little useless by the fact that I had him, but I appreciate you. I appreciate the effort and the thought, and it goes a long way. I'm glad. I hope you make it in the guild. She stands up and goes back to her desk and starts writing notes again. And it is a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. She looks around and goes, something's different. I'm not as annoyed with you guys as I usually am. Where's the small one? It was pretty torn up about Finn being torn up, so you didn't come along this time. I can't believe you just said that. (laughs) He... He will be very happy to know that Finn is alive, and he sort of like glances at him, writing out the thing on the chalkboard. Uh, alive and well. Well, he's yes, doing great. Well. <laughs> Sorry, mother. <laughs> no. I'll write some more times. It's okay, you can be done. You've earned it. You've had a rough few days. I tell you what, are you ready to go back with your friends? I, I I've so much to find out. It's, so much has happened. And in the in those couple of days while lecturing you, your mom would have probed you a bit about kind of your dreams and hopes while she had you and what the hell were you thinking going there and why would you do that stuff? And so she'll look at you simply and say, come here and give me a hug. Hurry. And as, as you hug, uh, she won't whisper it, but she'll quietly say, you better be the best at what you're doing that you possibly can. Anything less is unacceptable. But I'm not too worried. You usually commit pretty good to your your, t- your endeavors, even if you don't, you know, try not to get eaten by things. Thank you, and I I, I will I will do my best. All right, if you guys need anything, please stop by or send a letter. Would you mind if I sent you my homunculus if I need anything? Uh, no, no, that's perfectly acceptable. I've dealt with many wizard homunculi. Just want to ask before I do. That is all. You're very polite. You called yourself a dragon turtleborn. I am a dragon turtle born. Confused, but polite. Ms. Sewin, we came here on a somber note bringing bad news. We are happy that this is no longer the case. As always, it was a pleasure to see you. Ah, Roland the lawyer, you are always welcome in my home. Thank you. Shame your sister's so sassy. And you, Rabbi Jan. I see you've been keeping them, the rest of them alive. Rabbi Jan tries. Will you do me a favor? A personal favor? And she kind of leans towards you a little bit. Probably John is unsure, but nods. It's a real, real big favor. Probably John does a really deep sigh because this day is just never ending. And It's been a long day. It's been a long day. And uh, she says, she, she asks, what, what, is, what is the favor, Miss Finn's mom? If Fenilius decides to walk off by himself again, I want you to hit him really hard in the side of the head and tell him no sternly. Robbie John will, with total conviction in her face, say, I can do that. Or she'll say, <laughs> Robbie John can do this. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, Dragon Turtleborn. Uh, if you would like, I can assist her with that. I find that the discipline for Fenilius comes best from the female form. Fair enough. Miss Sewan? Uh, yes. Do you... F- Flippy boy, is it? Yes. That that will do, yes. Do you... Has Fenilius been able to inform you of what it was that devoured him and our friend? Yeah, so... What do you guys know? Tell me everything you know about it. I believe it's called something like a... Not a Hydra or something like that. Well, that's not the... That's not a factual name, but that that's a very astute name because it's definitely not a Hydra, but it kind of looks... Hydra, I get, oh, I get it, I get it, not bad, good job, okay, what else? And it kind of looks like this, and I cast Minor Illusion to show her what it looked like. When you do that, she actually holds up a book on her desk and goes, yeah, I'm aware, and there's a, there's a 3D, like, illusion book, where as she holds it, you can kind of see, and it looks like the actual, not a Hydra. Oh, that's very uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the gross, the grotesque, horrifying thing with it we saw. It's uh, she got the collector's edition. That's a great joke. That was good. <laughs> yeah, pop, we've pop, pop, D&D style. <laughs> I've only seen. I'm sorry, I've never seen it. Uh, my husband has seen two, and now my son has seen one. Uh, so far as I know, they're the only three that are in existence. 
and apparently you guys deleted one. I believe Grok wanted to make sure that nothing could reanimate it, so he disintegrated its body. Oh, great. Yeah. There's more of these monstrosities? There's been, like I said, there's been three in my in my almost thousand years. They are an aberration, not a monstrosity. Tomato, tomato. That's a big tomato. On a br- it's more like tomato, potato. Miss Selwyn, does that book detail the nature of its song? No, but I'm working on that. If you're in that area, I believe there's a member of the hand there. Yes. Was it the uh, Dr. Lecter? Mm-hmm. Did you give him the body? The body was ash. Completely. You completely ashified it. New term, ashified. Yes, the body was disintegrated. So, what's your relationship with this Dr. Lecter? He wanted... Well, he... Well, I, you could... Um, He had us kill another member of the hand. Oh, ho. If he uh, had to kill it, it had to have been a digit. Which digit did you kill? It's more like an eye. Jethero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And the plot thickens. A zero. <laughs> <laughs> I love Donix's little laugh there. <laughs> so you killed Jethero. That's impressive. We also got a very brief look at the rest of the council. Hand council? The fingers? That sounds oh, weird. What do you want to call it? Yeah. Digits, yeah. Weirdos. Bad people. And so, did you did you kill Mr. Lecter, Dr. Lecter? No. No, we did not. What did you do with Dr. Lecter? He did not give us a lot of opportunity to see his real form. He did. Smart. He did help us in identifying the not a Hydra. And also, he, for what it's worth, made his promise to leave Santa Vale alone as thanks for us dealing with Jaffero. What was the exact words in his promise? What was the exact wording? Basil sort of looks to the rest of his party. Well, essentially, Ms. Silwyn, he said that his devices would never be a threat to Centervale again. I believe no. he, he was referring to the things that he... And Basil this is very important. Says she says, interrupting you. Did he mention, he said the things that he controlled, the things he was involved with, that wouldn't be affecting the Vale? Yes. That's good and bad news. Uh, it's good news for the Vale, bad news for everywhere else. I, I had su- suspected as much, but we weren't really in a position to argue for more. You know, he's he's a weird one. I used to I used to uh, I actually trained him for a little while in some of the arcane arts. He's he's not he's powerful, but not in a blow you up kind of way. He knows a lot of things, and he really likes researching creations and monstrosities and aberrations. Basil will uh, fish. In his in his belongings and pull out the earbuds that he he took out and he will hold them out to her. He also had his brother give us these. Or can we, his, I don't his know, brother? Sandra, yeah, he wouldn't tell as much about him for the sake of us not going and killing him. But well, well Rin was there, so you can probably understand how that conversation went. And Rin's the little one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I like to clarify that with her because I'm sure Joe is like stupid and rich. Why are you saying I'm so late, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she, he will uh, put the earbuds on the table and say, um, if you uh, want them for studying or whatever, I don't know. I just know that they did manage to block out the Nodahydra's song and that allowed us to remember Fenelius and, and Durvin. Darvin, Durvin, Durvin, Darvin. Darvin, yes. All right, so she looks and she goes, are there any other questions you guys have read for me? Would it be inappropriate uh, if I gave you a hug? I mean, normally, I would probably disintegrate you for it. But come on over here. Maybe I won't, maybe I will. He gives her a hug and says, thank you. I have a question. Yeah, she says she's rubbing. She's she's doing this hug to her little flippy buddy. You it's said that you, at one point that you had trained this guy in the arcane arts. Yeah, when it came when he came, he uh, he was he was very adept and showed a lot of promise. And when it came time for him to learn about teleportation and distance and, and all of that. He, he came from a well-off family, and his family asked that I train him for a couple of years. So when he was 16 to the age of 18, I trained him in magic. That's very interesting. But... Yes, occasionally I get drugged down into training regular people, 
uh, even talented or not, but people in magic from other people who have political advantage because yay politics. She says it fancier than that. She doesn't. That's kind of not why I was asking. Oh. Ooh, do you think I'm a member of the hand? No, I was going to ask. Are you accepting any new students? I don't like to, but occasionally when a student shows great promise, I spend time with them. Are you looking to learn magic? I am always looking to learn more about magic. I'll tell you what. Fenelius is going to be adventuring with you. Why don't you chat with him? And then once I see him again, I'll get an assessment from his eyes as to your potential and expertise, and we'll see what happens. Fair enough. What kind of magic do you do? I like evocation. Ooh. Conjuration's another favorite one of mine. Okay. Well, let's do this. You guys go ahead and take off. I've got stuff to do. I'll talk with Fenelius again soon. And as I get more information on this, what did you guys call it? Not a Hydra? I'll send it to you. By the way, uh, that's not too far from the common accept- commonly accepted name. It's actually called a false Hydra. But not a hydra works. I like it a little better. More, what's the word the simpletons use? Pizzazz. I, I feel the name false hydra does, or not a hydra, I feel they don't really capture the quite terrible beauty of the song. But. Oh no. No, there's, I don't think there's a name out there except for, oh my god, please don't ever find this that would do it justice. Basil turns uh, to look at Finn and just says, I am terribly sorry it ate you. No sorry oh. than me, my friend. It's not your fault somebody wanted to go off by themselves and be a big shot. Miss Silwind, I thought you had you had commissioned your son to go and find something in that area for you. Yeah, he should have took some guild members with him. He did. Some more. She kind of looks sad, a brief... A brief uh, in, her, in her normally either stoic or angry face, a brief moment of really, truly sad emotion as she considers Darwin's fate. Are we... And the, uh, um, this is him turning away from uh, Miss Silwind now, and he, he says to me, mostly to Ravijan, are we at liberty to ask Darvin of, of what he wants? Remember, Darvin's body is not with you. Yeah, he's back He's back in, uh, in Center Vale. Ravijan needs a nap. Before you can attempt to contact his spirit? Yes. Um, however, Ravijan will cast a spell on him so his his body may not decay before we contact him. You're not casting anything on him. Like I said, his body is with three other people and Centervale being taken to O'Malley. Yeah, we know well, when we get there. Yeah. We we know when we get there we're making plans. But Robbie John really, really needs a nap. So then let's do this. Unless anybody has anything specific they want to say, let's time travel a little bit. You guys make it back to Centerville. It's the end of the day. It's getting kind of late. Why don't we go ahead and take a long rest? It's about 9, 1030 at night. Do we want to do Rabbi John's delay spell first? or Sure, if, you want to, if she wants to go find the body, but O'Malley will have already cast it. He's pretty good at cleric things. Oh. I forgot he was a cleric. I forgot he wasn't just a potato guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually higher level than all of you. He's like a super cleric. Oh, gosh. He's actually running Rabbi John's uh, temple, too. Rabbi John. Yeah, but Rabbi John is the boss of it. He's, he's your lieutenant when it comes to that. Somehow you did that, Rabbi John. He's retired. He needed a hobby. Whatever. That's pretty much it, actually. <laughs> he hates <laughs> potatoes. Nobody ever asked him about it. But his character flaw is that he, he's a potato farmer who hates potatoes. <laughs> he was happy when Briss tries to steal that potato. Good, that's one less of them. One less flipping potato. Yeah. I love but it, his I, toddler. I love... On the other hand, was upset. We're gonna go ahead and end the episode there. Thanks for coming along and, and, and listening to us play some Dungeons and Dragons. We hope you had a good time. And join us next time with Defenders of the Veil vale as we try to find dragons this way. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Defenders of the Veil. You can follow the cast on Facebook at Defenders of the Veil or on Twitter at Defenders Veil. Please subscribe. Go to your favorite podcatching app of choice and leave us a five-star rating and review. And be sure to tune in next week for more shenanigans from the Veil. 
Until then, guildies, farewell. Matt, are you doing okay over there, buddy? What the actual? Like, seriously. <laughs> he got you, didn't he? <laughs> I thought he was. I thought he was going to make us work hard to bring him back. And when he said that we couldn't get a hold of him, we were going to go off on an adventure to to liberate his soul so he could communicate or something like that, and be off planes walking. That's that's kind of why Robbie John is borderline pissed off because she tried to bring his dumbass back to life and she couldn't. And here he is. Fucking having tea with his mom. (laughs) But it was already done. So he was willing, but he wasn't dead anymore. Your spell would have worked had this not already happened. And it's funny, in preparation for this, when I'm chatting with Rick, and Rick wasn't sure until today what I was going to do with Finelius, but in chatting with this, uh, this is one of the possibilities we came up with. And by we, he he had a lot to do with the, oh, what if she tries to res me and I can't because I'm already back? And I'm like, oh, it's brilliant. Don't take that finger at us. You're in. Did I miss something? Finelius is no. alive. No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> so, something so funny about as, only being able to see his forehead. <laughs> is this a joke? Now, I want you guys to realize, even though this happened, death is real. All right, This is not some sort of fiat that, that will happen all the time. Specifically, we came up with this because I took Finelius away from Rick so that we could have that not a Hydra story. And in doing that, I was like, man, I feel bad taking a character, especially a character he really likes playing. And so the, the way for him to come back was relatively simple. Actions have consequences in this campaign. And if your character dies, it's not going to be simple to bring him back a lot of times, uh, unless you manage to get there quick enough with Rabbi Jan's spells. And Ren, or Ren, Finn's background is super high magic. Like his mom is one of the most powerful wizards in the game and in the fact that she can pull this off is all legitimate game mechanics. Like this happened without me homebrewing a simple thing. It's just something um, players can do. It is something players can do if you're high enough level, which you guys aren't yet. Stuff that players can do when the DM is doing stuff that players can do and not some of this. Well, it works because I say so. Yeah. Like with Anata Hydra, I'd, it worked because I said so. With some of the, with a lot of the crap I do with the Beholder, because I said so. Uh, but with this, this is all in-game, rules as written stuff. So, what are you guys doing? Wait, wait, wait. Is the clone thing a real thing? Uh, I mean, I was Absolutely. like, what? <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, yeah. Look, look it up Finn's in the journal. Finn's mom flat out said she knows how clumsy Finn is and has set this up in advance just in case. So, that, that's when so Finn weird. died, he went to the clone instead of going to whatever plane dictates it, is dictated by his alignment. For the last six days, you guys have been trying to find Finelius. For probably the first three of those days, Finelius was alive and being lectured about dying. <laughs> I can't You're imagine that. Who's on that topic for the rest of you? Anytime you think you've got an edge in your mom, she'll be like, "Do you remember that one time I brought you back from the dead because you're an idiot?" <laughs> What's funny is then, surely by that, uh, what do you call it, um, time scale, and judging by the journal, and I don't know how fast the clone spell works, but you know, we set off pretty quickly after talking to Belefiel, uh to head to Diboldar. So did you just like pop up after we left her house? Pretty soon after that, yes. <laughs> Within a day, I think. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go get your son. <laughs> I mean, that just means we're really good at our job, really. If you think about it, we kind of exceeded everyone's expectations. <laughs> now there's two Finiliuses. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, but hey, it was, one it was is a great corpse. Range. One well, of the, the necro with the role playing I've ever seen in my life, Basil did without knowing it. As soon as he sees Finelius, he said he threw the leg down on the ground that he'd been carried in a tamper <laughs> tamper, and it made me I mean, so I mean, happy. I mean, he was just like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. So now the necro noodle can have a fin, and we can have a fin. No, he can't. Finelius no. is keeping <laughs> Finelius's body. He finds it fascinating. Absolutely not. <laughs>